right, everyone. Hello. It's time once again for the spirit of Izzy. No, mid mid card mono. And we got over here the loose cannon. We got over here Sam Killer, the wrestling connoisseur. And we get back there, the guy mowing his yard. Yeah. And so, so we are doing a review today. I'm the future world champ. Yep. She is the future, future world, world champ, champ over there. Watching over us like a guardian angel. And today, you are. We're going to talk about the results for this year's Wrestling Don't Talk Who, which was a two night event that was on May 3rd and 4th, I want to say, in Fukuoka. That is, of course, with New Japan Pro Wrestling. So we have we did the prediction video. So now we're gonna go over some of the some of the interesting Do you have results. Our predictions written down there? No, I don't. I don't but I I remember what I what I predicted because I'm predictable. <laughs> I know I know my soul. Anyway, so night one. I don't have a soul. I'm more Japanese than you, so <laughs> that is true. I'm. You have you have Japanese. more of a soul than I am. I am, I. I have more Chinese than you do. Chinese have souls. Not this one. A soul, my soul. To the Undertaker. Yeah, okay. <laughs> to the Godfather. All right. To the Funkasaurus. Anyway. Anyway. So, the yeah. first match that we're going to talk about is Bullet Club versus Young Lions. So, that was Chase Owens and Yujiro. Takashi, the Tokyo Pimp. Third eyebrow. Oh my. <laughs> Versus uh, Tsuji and Shota, Umino. Shota, of course, being Reiki's <laughs> son. So I think it was pretty predictable. Yeah. Bullet Club was going to win here. Yeah. I go Bullet Club. Chase, Chase Owens got, got, the, got the specific win, which Package is nice. Package Pod Yes. He is using the Package Pod Driver. I calling it he's calling it something though I forget what he calls it Sit down, baby. anyway Yours. the next match that we're going to talk about is uh, another Young Lions but it was Young Lions with Yuji Nagata so it was uh, Ren Narito and Tomoyuki Oka with uh, with Yuji versus Yusuke Taguchi Tiger Mask and Liger so pretty predictable match yeah. yet again the oh. young lions lost it for for Nagata. You got your thing. Here. So the young lions lost it for Nagata, uh, with commentary, English commentary, going. Now the now the young lions are gonna go and get savagely beaten by Yuji Nagata, <laughs> by Blue Justice. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, I wonder where they're gonna go with that, you know, because Nagata's on his way out, obviously. So, do you think the, one of these young lions is going to turn heel at the end and they'll have a big send-off in that manner? I don't know. Not any of the young lions that he's specifically been working with because he's been working more mostly with Narita and Oka. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that either of them are primed for that anytime soon. You think it'll be a while? Or? I think, well, I mean, I think if he's going to feud with any young lion to get them over, it would probably either be Shota Mino or I don't know. Shota yeah, is probably the next one. The next big one to move up. Maybe Ren? I mean they may do, do nothing and just have Nagata around for a while as the stereotypical uh, old ace that this one? doesn't leave for a good while. Yeah, you I don't know. Uh, so we'll see. So the next match was a junior heavyweight versus heavyweight uh, six men tag match that was chaos represented by. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. Rope 3K 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 Rope 3K 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 Rope 3 Fast is on the way. Rocket Show and Yo to save the day. Oh my gosh, are you okay? Yeah, I just looked on a paper. Oh, I should have picked it up. I mean, I am. But so it was Rope Punky 3K, which is Show Yo and Rocket. Show Yo and Rocket. We about to make Roppongi 3K. Yeah, I know most of the words of the song. Versus Killer Elite Squad, which is uh, Davy Boy Smith, Lance Archer, and then specifically Takashi Zuka of Suzuki Goon. 
I now, love Killer Elite Squad. Yeah, Killer Elite Squad lost here yeah. via upset because show it was an upset. Show rolled up Takashi Izuka. It was which was, was which was incredible. Upset really. It was two minutes. It was a two minute match. It was the shortest match on the card. Which is insane. It is insane. Right. There's going to be hell to pay for that though. So that's that's gonna really get these these guys over. Cause I mean I I really expect um, Killer Elite Squad to just brutalize them, just destroy them, um, and them still maybe pull out you know an upset win after being brutalized. Yeah, which will be huge. I mean that's I mean, kind really. of what happened with uh, with Evil and Sonata when yeah. they when they won against Killer Elite Squad. All it took was a couple of mistakes from Killer Elite Squad who dominated 90% of that match. Like, I thought it was going to be a squash. But, they went but for the killer Evil bomb, Sonata like, immediately. Are much bigger than uh, Rapungi 3K. That is true. You know I mean? It's going to look, it's going to look better, mm -hmm. I, I feel, with Rapungi 3K. I agree. So, yeah, ho hopefully we get that. Right. Uh, but so it was then, a good match, a good short match. It was. Next match was uh, 5v5. So that was, I guess, sort of... Uh, Taguchi Japan versus Chaos. So Chaos was represented here by uh, Goto, Tomohiro Ishii, Toruyano, Yoshihashi, and Switchblade Jay White, mm -hmm. who got his own entrance. Good for him, I guess. Anyway, and that was and that was uh, against Michael Elgin, Togi Makabe, David Finlay, Juice Robinson, and my man. Tohenade. I love Toa. I liked how, how the, the ending of the match had had the New Zealander versus the Maori. I thought it was I thought it was a nice sort of exploration there. It's great because I mean uh on the, I, on the I feel like different both cultures. these guys are uh, possibly not there yet, but soon to be at that adoptable stage for the audience. Um, and we've gotten that before. Of course, Kenny Omega, um, to to a large degree, a lot all the ori original members of the Bullet Club. Bullet Club. Um, so yeah, I feel like both of these guys will get there. Um, it's questionable how long they're going to stay, but I would I would predict that they're going to stay for a good while. I mean, as I imagine as... I imagine both of them will probably stay for a good portion of their career yeah. considering both of them went up through the young lions program mm -hmm. so i think it's especially switchblade considering you know he's already done like this outside venture that yeah, a lot he, of guys do yeah he he's already back from excursion his first big match when he came back from excursion mm -hmm. um when he returned at power struggle uh he went up again or he challenged tanahashi at wrestle kingdom 12 yeah the big reveal yeah switchblade um, so yeah, I thought it was a good match. It was a good ending. Yeah. Yeah. So. Good. No gave, gave every, gave every person a nice moment. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I think, got a little bit more shine on Jay White, which I think was, of yeah, course, but, the ultimate I mean, goal. Yeah. Uh, so the next match was for the never six man, never open eight six man tag team championships. So that An was interesting match. That was the the Gorillas of Destiny, or the Bullet Club Fale. OGs. So that was Bad Club Kfale, Tamatonga, and Tongaroa, versus what they call themselves the Supervillains. That is, of course, the Young Bucks and, and Marty, Marty. Scurll. So interesting, interesting matchup in the beginning with, um, or not in the beginning, but I guess throughout the match with with Marty, Marty and to, Fale trying to take on Fale. Yeah. Show you something. What's that? Of course, Marty being the junior heavyweight in the group, and Fale being it's, the super it's heavyweight great in the see, group. You know, Marty running over, and I think it was this one, and maybe the next next show saying, "Yeah, so he's gonna go heavyweight." Oh yeah, because right. he kept trying to to slam Fale. Yeah. And uh, was not very successful. He did not have any success at and, all. And yeah, so really interesting. And Fale just selling it like. What are you doing? Yeah. Fale uh, just really looking annoyed. Uh-huh. Just being like, why? Fale. Oh my god, that's pretty cool. Yeah, what do you think? You here? need the sunglasses, though. Yeah. 
There's our Fale. Bullet Club. It's a biggie head and a Brodus clay body. I made the clothes. Got his little head tattoo. That's on good. There. Sam Killer for your custom WWE figure needs. You could probably sell these. I probably could. That, that? Especially, I think Folly looks. Oh, I love him. Oh, you made his pants fall down. Okay. So, um, <laughs> wow. yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what, really what to say for this match because um, I, I really feel it was a big rub for the supervillains, honestly. Like, I, I and, forgot. They're animal stickers. In a, in a match that. Nice or coloring, Dad. Or typically. The Bullet Club in general is um, not the underdogs. And, yeah, he's coloring that. Um, I don't know if anybody could be really could be considered the underdog in this matchup, but you would think that the OGs had the advantage, despite being champions. Yeah. In you know the other ways, because really they're fighting junior heavyweights. Yeah. Despite the Bucks you know, going heavyweight, them, going heavyweight, they're still. I mean, really, how uh, heavyweight did they go? And I, I feel the OGs are really taking some falls lately. Yeah, that, I mean, at least it it wasn't the the most OG of OGs because it was Tangaroa that took right. the pin there. But I, I still feel like they're taking a lot of falls, and I don't know where that's going to come into play later. Um, if we're going to, you know. If, how much it's going to matter. Yeah. Politically speaking, you know, if, if they're like, okay, you guys are going to take these falls, but we're going to do this later on, you know, so it's going to even out or or what. Um, I mean, there's obviously things on the horizon that we don't know. So, yeah, interesting matchup. The belts, of course, stay within the Bullet Club. And uh, at the end of the match, everybody shook hands and too sweeted. And show that you know Bullet Club is that that actually that actually fine. made made my mom a little bit more of a fan of Tamatonga yeah. when he handed over the belt and didn't you know pull anything funny because she was like oh I got a bad feeling tease, you know it's it's always tease especially since it feels like he's going to be the one to take control he should be he should be so but you can always say it. Is anybody watching your nerds? <laughs> it's true, because you're watching us. We're nerds. We are pretty bad nerds. So, um, yeah. But, I mean, how else are you going to keep the club together? So, that is a good thing, too. Mm -hmm. So, a good match. And a fun match. Yeah. Satisfying. Why was it fun? So, the next match was uh, Suzuki Goon versus L.I.J. So it was all five members of L.I.J. That is, of course, Bushi, Evil Sanada, Hiromu Takahashi, and Tetsuya Naito. Versus Suzuki Gun, which was represented here by El Desperado, Taichi, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, Zack Sabre Jr., uh, and then, of course, Zack Sabre Jr.'s hype man, Takamichi Noku, who's just there. Just hanging and, out. And Suzuki. Uh, another fun match, really. Yeah. If the wrestlers are watching, oh. you're awesome now. You got that, Zack Ryder? We know you're watching. Ammo Joe, you're a bully nerd. Yeah. Um. I, 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 <laughs> Did you lose it? I you don't know what, what to say about this match. It was a great match. It uh, was awesome. You know, you you have great workers all around, and yeah. I I was glad to see. To see the comeback, which was, of course, uh, Hiromu coming in and sort of cleaning out momentarily. Mm -hmm. I thought that was I thought that was nice because I'm a big fan of. Oh. You know, this is one of those matches where I, I feel like you could be a big fan of everybody in the matchup and just enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody's playing their part that they should play. And you can like everybody involved, and then, you know, you can cheer your faces and boo the heels, and you know who you want to win, and at the end of it, 
you get Minoru Suzuki kicking some uh, people in the face. Kicking some young boys. So. Everybody's yeah. a nerd. Everybody is a nerd. I, I just don't have a lot to say about this match. It was enjoyable and it, it did its job. And yeah. So Everybody different from what we is, see usually in the nerd, WWE. It is. Including you, Roman. Including you. Ooh. Oh, Roman. That's some fighting words. I like him. So the next match is a tag team match. That was Chaos represented by Osprey and Okada. Versus sort of Taguchi Japan represented by Tanahashi and Kushida. Of course, this was to set up for the next night where they had their singles matches for the junior heavyweight and heavyweight mm-hmm. titles, respectively. It was a fun match, too. Yeah. And, I mean, really... Nice uh, nice moments where you have uh, Kushida going up against Okada, yeah. Osprey and Tanahashi, kind of exploring yeah, that you, you, dynamic. I'm watching this match, and I'm thinking, what WWE could learn from this? You know, uh, setting up the next night, you know. Uh, essentially, what WWE should be doing with Raw... For their pay per views, and a lot of times they fail to really set things up within matches, you know, within the booking itself. You know, sometimes they do set things up with storylines, um, but sometimes it would be really refreshing just to set everything up with a good match, you know, and I, I feel they fail in that, that front quite often. And this was just a straight up match from. Two different matches that were going to happen the next night that yeah. was fun. Yeah. It was fun. It set everything up and it leaves, leaves you hyped and excited to watch those matches to see where they're going. It is what it is. New Japan, I think, in general, is a lot more effective with utilizing their superstars, even, even if it's the same or the similar matches. Yeah. It's they always they always find ways to do something new and interesting with it. And it's always fun. And I mean, New Japan, um, Jap- Japan itself, especially New Japan, tag teams are utilized very well. Which in the WWE, tag teams aren't utilized. Whether it's uh, legit tag teams that are going to go for tag titles, or if it's just tag matches, uh, you know, two on two, three on three, four on four, five on five, etc. You just don't get that in WWE the way you, I, I feel like we could. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, Take notes is what we're saying. Let's just let's just say this that long time ago, because they were short on time, they put four men together, a tag team and two singles wrestlers, uh, to do promos and to do matches together because they were all heels, and so these were all top guys. And what came out of it was a big promo one night. With Arn Anderson talking about how the four of them were like the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and that and stuck. the rest was history. And you got the greatest faction out of wrestling ever. That was because of tag teams. So, yeah. Do you want to do the next night or do it? Oh, uh, we, well, we still have we still have two more matches. We do. Yeah, we have we the. Two oh, yeah, that's matches. right. Okay, so it was the first matchup was. A rematch of the Wrestle Kingdom 12. That was Cody versus Kota Ibushi. Which, these two matches, we kind of, you know, you kind of know what you're expecting to get. Yeah. There's always a possibility that that could change, but we kind of predicted. I think, yeah, I think we figured know, Kota was going to was gonna, was gonna lose here. And, and uh, Kenny would pick up the win. Yeah. Uh, so it was like give and take to keep it to keep but, it a little bit even between the the two sides. Yeah, that's what builds up to the you know. Oh, the <laughs> not right now, honey. Not right now. You're gonna lose it all over the place. You're not gonna do it right. You're gonna tear it up. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Mommy's gonna be mad. Don't do it. Don't don't take them out. Don't tear it up. Don't cut it. I am not going to cut okay. it. So, yeah, anyway, uh, I I actually really enjoyed the Cody and Cody Bushi match. I did, too. There was the great spot on the table, which, I'm sorry, Japanese tables are not American Japanese tables. Japanese tables are terrifying. Cody took this bump through a table, and it did not break. The first time, it didn't break. The second time, it gave... 
but I think it scratched the oh, it back. Oh, it totally split his back Gore, open. Gored him. And the first time you can see, Dakota comes down with that stomp, and it just is like, clash. He's all him. Compressed him. him totally. All him. And they're, he was, they're like, let's do it again. I screamed. Oh, I, dude, it was like I, pain. I watched it, and I was like, oh, God, yeah. the table didn't break. I was like, oh, dude. Because you could tell it was rough. And then they did the spot again, and this much of the table broke. Just like a hole. Yeah. Right where his feet hit on the other side. It was like... uh, Yeah, it was some It was like Dragon Ball Z punched. (laughs) Yeah, it was... And it went through him and shattered the table at that point. And Cody just kind of went through that edge and it just shredded his back. back. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But... It was a rough yeah, time. It, it was a, it was a thing great to watch. match. Oh yeah, I mean both both these guys are very talented. Top of their game. Yeah. I mean, right now they're they're at the top of their game. I mean, Kota Kota Ibushi oftentimes I think will be touted as one of one of the greatest of his generation. And of course, that is that is absolutely true. <laughs> but I mean, Cody held his own. Yeah. I think Cody I, will go I, down I, the same way. I felt like I felt like this is a, a, a pretty nicely matched, evenly matched sort yeah. of showdown between the two of them. So uh, you know, great build up. I think this match could have gone on last, and I, I think may so have been a better uh, last match than what we got. Yeah, and not that taking is anything away from them. Not taking but. anything away from both uh, Kenny Cody and, and is Hangman. Probably the best heel in the business right now. Don't do it right now, honey. Wait, wait. Listen to me. I'm pleading. <laughs> wait. Which one? I have evidence right here in this video. <laughs> yeah. He asked you to wait. Yeah, it's true. He does. So just wait. Look through them, but don't don't fold them. Because we will help you. Um, she's so just gonna go fold them. That's that. Yeah, realize. she's gonna fold them and cut them up. <laughs> um, that's that. And then the, the last match was, was Kenny, Omega. Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page. And I love me some Hangman Page. I do too. He actually, has grown on me so much. And my my um, my dad became a bit more of a fan of Hangman Page. This here. was a great showing for Hangman. Definitely, really. he and he came out. He came out looking, looking like a great. champ. Looking he like a great champ against um, Switchblade. Here yeah, other, he did. Other month. So I mean, this was he looked just, incredible. Honestly, would it have been believable if he had beat Kenny? I feel it would have been because you know his style is is just really good. He does some great moves. Uh, for a guy his size, and he can move like a cruiserweight too. Yeah, you know, I mean. He's, yeah, he has. He definitely has has mastered some very impressive moves, and I think because of that, it just he doesn't have the. It, um, it helps him so much more at this developmental point in his career, where does. he's where he's trying to find what he's going to be as a wrestler. Yeah. I feel like in ring ability, he's there. Uh, I agree. I don't. I don't he know might about not, he might not have, wise. Yeah, he might not have quite as much of that ability to to run a match. Right. For 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 and more than just himself, but I think he he I can. I like his spots. Yeah. Um, they could have a little more psychology to them, but I feel like he's he's pretty close to his in ring work. Uh, he just needs to develop his persona more. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, like, if we look at him and Cody. Cody has such ring charisma. He really plays this role. The, the character is there, one hundred percent. So, Cody. I mean, uh, Hangman Pages is so close. To, yeah. He's really good right now. Um, I thought his style and Kenny's style really complemented each other. Here. Very well. Um, and they weren't burdened by anything larger than what the story was. It's kind of like Cody's number one guy. You know, Cody fought Kenny's number one guy. Kenny's fighting Cody's number one guy, and uh, yeah, it was it was an interesting matchup. And it was like, okay, well, where are they gonna go from here? And you know, what so what other directions can they take this? Yeah. And I mean, you know, we we've, we've had moments where we we're just like, what what else could they possibly do? And then New Japan yeah. and Ring of Honor comes and surprises us again. Yeah. So it's, you know, the possibilities are in fact endless. 
That so, was night one. That was night one. Okay, night two we're gonna try and run through quickly. Yeah. So night two was another Young Lions match versus veterans. So that was uh, Taguchi, Ruska Taguchi, Tiger Mask, and Liger versus Renarita Shota Umino, that's Red Shoes' son, and Yuya Uemura, who I'm a little bit less familiar with than I am with the other Young Lions, but of course the veterans here took the win. Shouldn't Red Shoes' son really wear red boots? I think it would it would differentiate him from the other Young Lions too much. Mm. And they're they're to not come. about that. It's to come. Yeah. yeah. I mean, eventually. Once, once, he's, once he's not relegated to wearing the standard attire of the Young Lions, which is, of course, the black trunks and the black boots, mm -hmm. I think then he'll probably be able to. Yeah. I look forward to that. Next match was uh, Bullet Club versus Young Lion and Nagata. So Bullet Club again, which is Chase Owens and Yujiro. They've sort of settled into becoming yeah. the, the, another tag team within the Bullet Club. Mm -hmm. So that is Yujiro and Chase Owens with, of course, Pieter, who supports both of them, versus Yuji Nagata and Tomoyuki Oka. So, of course, Oka again takes the pin here. From Chase Owens. Build, you know, I mean, pay your dues. Yeah. Get experience, pay your dues, and build character. Definitely. Got that, Corbin? Learn. See what happens here. So the next match that we got here is Chaos versus Suzuki Goon. Different, same members of Chaos that show Yo and Rake. They're about to make no Rokongi 3K. <laughs> It'll, it'll never end. Never end. And that was versus Takashi Izuka, Taichi, and Ta Takamichi Noku. So Taka, can imagine after after a good amount of time. Of course, it ends with Chaos picking up the win again because they're Rupongi three K three K three K. Rapongi 3K, 3K, 3K. Rapongi 3000 was on the way. Rocky Show and Yo saved the day. I can't believe it. That was all I have to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be ready to like punch me in the face. But yeah, so another, another nice showing for Rapongi 3K, who obviously they are pretty high on Rapongi 3K, and of yeah. course Rocky Romero. Nice that they got a win uh, against other members of Suzuki Goon. And a little bit more evenly matched, mm -hmm. a showdown between them. So next match is, and was it, no, it wasn't that much, but um, the next match is Chaos, again, so that's Toru Yano and Tomohiro Ishii this time, versus Toa and Togi, Toa Hanare and Togi Makabe. Um, these were two of the teams, I believe, for World Tag League. Mm, when they yeah. when they did World Tag League this past year, so yeah. nice little sort of short-ish match between the, the two teams. Some days it's more than just play time. I mean, it's it's as it's as good as you as you're gonna get. I mean, Ishii being the Stone Pitbull and Toruyano being Toruyano, like. Yeah, I mean. Uh, it was it was more than anything. It was more of a showcase for Toa. Yeah. Than anything else. And. Which is great because I love Toa. Yeah. But I mean, you get all the uh, kind of cultish personalities of both of these guys, too, that is really missing in, like, in American wrestling. You know, we, we don't have the guys that are, um, you know, you don't have like a, a hacksaw anymore or a Hercules or a British bulldog or that type of personality to come out and it's just a nice white meat baby face yeah. for the crowd to get behind. And you do still get that in Japan, which is nice. And these guys can alter it up to different different levels of that, but it works. It did. And in tag teams. Each one of us Use everybody. Three. Okay. Is this my third one? Yeah. Okay. So the next match we're going to talk about is sort of Takuji Japan versus Chaos again. So that is uh, Yoshihashi, Hiroki Goto, and Switch Billy J. White. Versus Michael Elgin, David Finley, and Juice Robinson. I just want to say, uh, Finley and Robinson, what a 
weird tea. I, sure. I love both of them individually. They're, they are. So it's been interesting to see them it, it work is. together as a team. And you can tell they're having fun. Yeah. Is the great part. Uh, but sometimes it just is like, these are two really weird guys. Yeah. <laughs> they're enjoying themselves, but this is really weird. Uh, but it's cool. Yeah. Something. Alright, so next match is LIJ versus Suzuki Goon again. Different members of Suzuki Goon, all the same members of LIJ. That is, of course, Bushi, Evil, Sonata, Naito, and Takahashi. Versus uh, Suzuki Goon, who's re- represented this time by El Desperado, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, Minoru Suzuki, same as, uh, as the night before, but also now instead of Taichi and Taka, although Taka wasn't in the match. It is Killer Elite Squads. That is, of course, Lance Archer and David Boy Smith Jr. Of course, yet again, LIJ standing tall here. Hard to, be, hard to bet against LIJ. It is. They are. Unless you make the list. The list of Ingobernables de, 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 Jer, de Jericho. Yes. That, that shirt was great. This is awesome. It's great. It really is. And, uh,. Jericho is back. Jericho was back. In Jericho Japan. never left? Question mark? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's been in the audience watching the whole time. And he's waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Who knows? Who can tell? Maybe he's hiding in Don Callis' uh, hotel room or something. I believe it. Hard to say. That sounds right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Naito, covered in blood. Gets hit by the ring bell. Yeah. Just so completely. We're, like, we're going to get that follow-up. Which from, I'm uh, hoping. Attack. I'm hoping now, that because this is the second feud that he's having in Japan, that on the cruise of Jericho, ooh, we will so get. be lovely. We will get not just Tetsuya Naito. Oh, the whole get. LIJ as a whole. Los Ingobernables de Japón. That would be great. You would, you would love that. I would die. You would. Because then it'd be it'd be like six of my favorites all in one place. I'd have Jay Lito. I'd have Kenny. I'd have Hiromu. Wow. I'd have Sonata. I'd have Dalton Castle. And cheeseburger. Cheeseburgers on it. And I, I like I cheeseburgers. I love cheeseburger. No oh, cheeseburgers. I like. Cheeseburgers. I love cheeseburger. He's great. I love him. He needs some bacon or something on there. Fatten him up a little bit. Put him in a tag team with Ellsworth. There's a thought Ellsworth's going to be on the boat. You left him off your list just then. Yeah, because he's not, he's not in the six. You don't talk to him? You don't like... Trying to like, I'm saying, what the trying to make my chin, chin disappear. Chin, like, like you're gonna talk to him and be like, "Hi." Right. Is it cover my chin, my prominent chin? Yeah. 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 Fair or maybe you stick it out even more. It's like, like an alpha, like an alpha male thing. Yeah. Anyway. Attend to hot Ellsworth. <laughs> anyway, so the next match we're gonna talk about is is kind of a big match as well. So it's uh, Bullet Club versus Bullet Club. That is Bullet Club represented here by Cody, Hangman Page, Marty Skrull, and the Young Bucks on one side versus Bad Luck Fale, Tamatanga, Tangaroa, and the Golden Lovers on the other side. Interesting. Yeah. Um, my favorite part of this match was Kenny taking his shirt off and throwing it out in the crowd and Cody going and getting it. Uh, just, 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 it's just terrible. Genius absolutely, absolutely, absolutely trash scum of the earth. That's great. Beautiful. Took it, Beautiful. Took the shirt from the fan that caught it and then ended up giving it to somebody else because he, he took it and come out back up front and he was just like, ah. Oh. So somebody else got the shirt. So I mean, it's just great heel work. It is. Yeah. What a scummy bit. Frankly. Good, uh, a genius, though. Another another good moment was Marty Skrull trying to yet again get one up on Bad Luck Folly and just again failing. Uh, I think he actually got him up this time. Didn't he? And then he 
father yeah, comes but, back on him. I was like, yeah, but I mean, you still. know, it's not good, but it was a great spot. Yeah, I mean, like it's you're, like you're just like, oh my god, oh, scroll oh, my god, scroll it's gonna did happen. It. The no splat. Yeah. Uh, very old school. <laughs> it was. Very it, was it was very funny. Also. Uh, it was a good moment. Yeah. Apparently, rumor is uh, Cody and the Bucks are on the radar for WWE right now. I would probably say more so because they just they sold out all in in like forty minutes or something like that. Yeah, like a half an hour, less than a yeah. half an hour actually. And, it was like twenty nine uh, minutes and thirty six yeah. seconds or something that Cody posted. So I mean, obviously these would be guys that you would want, and the only way I could ever see them even going back possibly would be the NXT, where they could be protected and used properly. Ish. Alternately, is is if is if they allow Cody like one hundred percent creative, creative control. control. Which they're not going to do. You would save the company if you did that. Yeah. Honestly, this would be like a Stone Cold moment. Because, I mean, Stone Cold really did save the company oh, from he bankruptcy. Sure he sure did. Uh, Just and because he, Vince he, is not... He had, he had so much... He had such a better understanding. Yeah. Vince is not uh, anywhere near bankruptcy right now, obviously. But the product just sucks. So... So a lot of people have lost faith. Yeah. I don't know who this is. Yeah, it's fair. Anyway, um, but actually, yeah. it was it was through this match that, that we figured out or that we found out there's a new member. Yes. Or really, a returning member. Returning member. Bone, Bone Soldier. Soldier. Now, people haven't been that hyped about Bone Soldier returning. I don't think anybody is hyped about Bone Soldier returning. From <laughs> but I mean, I'm. But I was knowing like, oh. now that it's Taiji. Right. It, Spoiler. Sorry if you didn't know. <laughs> now you know. Bone Soldier is Taiji Shimori, who oh. was a former uh, X Division champion. I believe. Most recently in Impact. In Impact. He had done some tag work with ACH, I believe. Over in, in Japan, although not specifically in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So, it, interesting, of course, that he's now Bone Soldier. He is back pretty much just in time for the upcoming Best of Super Juniors that leads to a lot of speculation that people believe he will probably be the one to win Best of Super Juniors, which I would be fine with. I'm a big fan of Taiji. I would love to see the, hopefully, killer feuds that would come out of his return, such as versus... Hiromu Takahashi, who is probably, not probably, who's definitely my favorite junior heavyweight in New Japan, but also some other people that are around that division anyway. Look at Takamichi Noku, look at Taichi and El Desperado, Will Ospreay, Roppongi 3K. So it would be interesting to see how that ends up working out. So that was the big reveal, Tomatonga revealed that there is a returning bone soldier which is of course Taiji Shimori. Now the next match we're going to talk about is Will Ospreay versus Kushida for the IWGP Intercontinent or IWGP excuse me IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. So of course Kushida and Ospreay this isn't their first time in a title match with each other definitely not their first time in a match with each other. But definitely a really good match overall. I mean, both of these guys know each other so well. Both of them can compete with each other really well. Both of them have pretty loyal fan bases. I'm a big fan of Kushida. I like Kushida. Kushida is my second favorite to win the Fatal 4-Way at Wrestle Kingdom. But, I mean, of course, he has a prolific career of being a junior heavyweight champion in Japan. Offspring, over the past couple of years, has really risen to the top of the junior heavyweight division. He has defended the belt in some of the more impressive, I think, showings of the junior heavyweight division. Of course, in the, in the Fatal 4-Way, where he didn't defend there, but he won it. And then he went on to defend against Marty Skrull at Sakura Genesis. 
He defended against uh, Hiromu Takahashi. He defended against Kushida. Now all, all in individual matches. And say what you will about Osprey. I'm not. I'm not the man's biggest fan by any stretch of the imagination. But he is just really excellent at physicality in a match. And I know a lot of it's because it's so flashy with how he bounces around the ring and springboards off of everything and screams and is very, very, very streaky. But I think that his style of combat, for lack of a better word, his in-ring style, because it is so different from Kushida, makes the matches between them just absolutely fascinating to watch because you see how both of them have adapted to fight each other. So, in a lot of ways, you see how Kushida is... has done his homework, so to speak, or has learned from his past matches against Walt Ospreay and vice versa. So that's why their matches are always very quick and fast-paced, but also very... They're very aware of each other and their tendencies. So that's what makes it an interesting match to me. That match was probably the most interesting singles match on the card. Go on. We're already talking about Kushida, Kushida versus Osprey. Oh, your favorite. Kushida, yeah. Kushida versus Osprey. I did too, actually. I think they, I think I both of really, them really know good. each other very well in the ring. Mm -hmm. And so what I was saying before, for all of you that were that, that I were watching, I actually thought Kushida was going to take it. I hoped. And I was like, mm, okay, I'm fine with this. You know, as the match was going on, I was like, this is really good. They're kind of showing that he has um, his number, essentially. That? Pretty soon, baby. It was kind of showing that he had Osprey's number, uh, but as it turned out, no. Osprey. Still there. Osprey. Um, and then, of course, we got Kamatanga come out. And we reveal the Bone Soldier. Uh, I was kind of just wanting Tomatonga to come out and just beat his ass. Wouldn't that be great? You know. um, interesting, though, that Tonga comes out to, to do the reveal. Because it's usually reserved for the leader of Bullet right. Bob. Right. And I thought that was a nice tease, perhaps, to, you know, hey... Tonga's taking over while this, you know, Kenny is kind of distracted with Golden Lovers and Cody isn't accepted as the leader. And so it, it shows, you know. Yeah. So um, that Tonga Cody, is. Cody's a very Western heel. Yeah. Which, is, which, which makes him even more despicable in terms of the New Japan stable. Uh -huh. Because even, even in Japan. Their heels have a sort of code of honor that they follow that yeah. Cody does not. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it, it was really nice. It's almost showing that Tonga is calling the shots and he's building the Bullet Club back up in his image, too. Yeah. So, uh, interesting. Like, okay, hey, uh, Skrull couldn't get it done. So, I'm going to bring in someone who can. And uh, just a side note, I would think that. Uh, Anthem Sports will be really pissed right now since Taiji now has left and gone to Japan, specifically New Japan. Well, I mean, it's it's also ambiguous as to what the the conditions of his contract. True, and I mean they're willing to work, but it by all means it looks like Taiji is done with uh, Impact Wrestling. The word is that he's done with Impact Wrestling. Yeah, I mean, which is also interesting since the uh, Don Callis and uh, uh, what's his face are the ones working with New Japan yeah. so much and and doing the commentary and they're the creative behind Impact Wrestling now. Yeah. So if you're Anthem, you've got to kind of question, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> how did you let one of our guys get away? Yeah. 
And now he's, yeah. So, interesting, to say the least. Definitely. So, the next match is the final match of the night, the main event. That is, of course, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Go, Ace! Versus the Rainmaker, Kazuchika you know, Okada. My dad's favorite wrestler. I've got to say, I was pulling for Tanahashi on this one. I was too. And the match itself even lended to it that, you know. No I mean, both Tana of us, Hashi, I think, predicted really that Tanahashi might might take it here. Yeah, maybe the. Just to sort of give, give Okada a reset. Champion. Yeah. Yeah. And, but no, Okada, he pulled it out. Yeah. You know, and I thought it was a really good match. Um, I'm not. Well, I mean, it's it's hard to Okada it's hard fan. to have a bad match between two men that one know each other so well, and two are so they're they're honestly both of them are pretty much workhorses for the company. Yeah. So both of them are incredibly talented, not incredibly mention, hardworking. Okada has been built so well. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I I'm not the biggest Okada fan, and I can question if he can carry others. And I question that because the guys he's been in there with are all people who carry others. Yeah. And so his winning streak over these guys um, is almost legendary in and of itself. I mean, he's been there with everybody. It's anybody now. And uh, he has come out, come out on top. He's been built superbly well. Yeah. And so this match just added to that To the point where, list. where, I mean, honestly, the person who beats them, who beats him, is going to be made. Yeah, I was just talking to, to uh, John of Square Circle Journal the other day about it. It's like, man. Big ups, big ups to our bro, John. Uh, the good brother, John. It's true, though. I mean, like, where do you go from here? And who I mean, is what, it that you want to get that final rub? And, uh, God, you've got some really top names, though. I mean, I, I really, you know, not to turn this into a, a, a booking video, but, but. I, I would really... Put the belt on Cody for a little while. Honestly, I'd have the Kenny tease, which they've done. Like they're going to book the match. I would almost have like a contract signing, and Cody come in and sign the contract and steal it out from Kenny. You <laughs> talk about heat, that heel Gaijin that, heat. That would be nuclear. Um, and then Cody win it to boot. You know, and uh, have let Cody have a, a good little run, mm-hmm. and let Okada get it back. And then have Cody get it back and trade off a little bit. Cody doesn't need the standard Japanese belt. I've had this many defenses. Yeah. You know, you could just have the belt on Cody and then give Goto a rub. Let Goto get that belt that he's been chasing. Get him off that. Ever. Off of Cody. Then you let Cody get it back in like two or three months and have, have a couple defenses. You know, you do that. And then my final buildup would actually be Sonata. My my go to build would be Sonata. And why, having, Son- why Sonata over Evil or over uh, Hiro Mu? <laughs> to me, Sonata has that ring presence and that charisma more so than I, the others. And I mean, they. they I would have I would it, argue but, you for for Takahashi because I love Hiro Mu. Yeah, he's, but he's, I mean, he still has a way to go. Yeah, I was like, he's he's out outweighed and outclassed. In a lot of ways, He's got a there, ways, ways to go. But, but you know, uh, I say Sonata for the same reasons I've always said Naito, in that they remind me of Kiji Muto. And especially Sonata, since he, he worked under uh, Muto for so long. I was going to say. You know, and uh, Sonata would be my guy that would hold it forever and beat Tanahashi, beat Okada, beat everybody. Um, I would have Sonata get it and then. Um, Probably ultimately Naito take it off him and do that teacher student storyline thing, yeah. But then have Sonata get it back, and um, that would be my go to guy. I mean, Okada is now established as an ace, yeah, by far. And it's kind of hard, like, once you get someone established like that, what do you do when you don't have anybody else really built up to that level? Yeah, Naito's the closest, then I would probably say Kenny, and Kenny's never held it even, yeah, and so. So I think, oh, was, I mean, I think a lot of people think that Dominion's going to be Kenny's time. Maybe. Because it's a, it's a two out of three falls. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they're both tied up, essentially. Yeah. Naito, or not Naito, Okada has won, Kenny has won, they have a draw. I would also, 
you got to get Ibushi in there at some point. And so so the, the tease that I think most people are expecting, Kenny gets it at Dominion, Ibushi wins G1. Mm. And then Wrestle That's what I was like, 13 you know, will be Golden Lovers. Yeah. yeah. And the, the whole build between that will be the struggle between them having to put aside their newly rediscovered mm-hmm. tag team relationship. Not to mention, it, if Kenny distances himself from Bullet Club and then he tries to get back with Bullet Club at that point, and then like... Them just being like, you had your no chance. Yeah. It, it really puts Kenny out there as a, a man standing alone, which raises the stakes. Yeah. I mean, really. Um, great future for New Japan. I mean, there's so many ways they could go from here. And there's so many um, good ways they can go from here. But that's the, that's I, the biggest, I think. I do feel they emphasis. they need to look at building other aces. I mean, they've put so much effort into Okada. Um, I, I don't think they capitalized on Naito the way they should have. Yeah. And so they're kind of left in the dark. They don't have a Tanahashi Shinsuke pair like, you know, like it's been in the past. Um, even at that point, it was Tanahashi, Shinsuke, and then you had Goto was always in the shadow that you... Um, Wondered if he was ever going to, you know, raise up and take that. Um, and where we stand, there's a lot of talented guys that could could come on top. But yeah, it just remains. Should be a very seen. interesting year. Yeah, I know a lot of us. Of course, you already have uh, the New Japan Network. Yes, I do. New Japan and the world. Some some others that I've talked to are like ready to drop. The Dodo V Network in favor of New Japan. I, I, okay, I love New Japan so much, and my grandpa is, has come to like it so much. So, you can't have the account running on two separate devices. Right. So, I bought my grandpa his own his New own Japan account. account. So, That's he crazy. can watch it whenever he wants. Yeah. And so, then I can also watch it whenever I want. Yeah. Without, without having to log into one and log out of the other. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he and that's what he usually it's, does when he when he's not feeling WWE. And he lately, turns it on WWE has been so bad that you know uh, when something else is putting on that much better of a product, it's hard to ignore. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Special New Japan looking to get to the market. So who knows? Not us. That is our show, so good night and good.